you all have seen the cabinets in my paint room and every time I need to test my spray gun, I obviously test it on my cabinets and they've gotten a little out of control. So what we're gonna do is we are going to fix this look. Does it mean that I won't be spraying paint on my cabinets anymore? Mm, I guess we'll have to see. Let's see if we can't um, make these look a little bit better. I have another budget friendly sprayer that I have been sent and we're gonna test that out. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna do half of the doors with my Fuji Semi Pro 2, which I use often and you've heard me rave about it. I love it. We're gonna try out another sprayer as well and see just will a budget friendly sprayer actually do as good a job as my sprayer that is $500. Here are all of the doors with their hardware off and you can see they look pretty bad. Um, all the hinges are off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the hinges started cleaning and while the hinges are soaking, then we will start prepping the doors and cleaning them up. This is the hardware. I've already taken some of the hinges in there but haven't started their process of cleaning them up. But you can see that the hardware looks pretty bad. It's, all of it is quite bad. So let's see, let's see what we can do about cleaning it up. Got my crock pot here. I bought this maybe a year ago at Goodwill and it's just one of the small ones. And I've already got it on, but it's got hot water in it. I think we'll put a little bit of Dawn in there. And we'll just go with that for now. So I'm just gonna put all the hardware in there. And we'll just let that start soaking. Make sure it's all submerged. What that'll do is it'll get the paint off. And I'll probably let that soak for about an hour or so. All right, so it's time to clean the doors. And what I've got is some um, hot water, a little bit of Dawn detergent, dishwashing liquid in there, and my sprayer of Awesome Cleaner. This stuff is amazing, but when you spray it, it, it can cause you to cough, so you may want to use a respirator or a mask with this. Um, but it is very good at cutting through dirt and grease, especially. I'm not really too concerned about getting the paint off of these doors because if they make it through a scrub with this stuff and it hasn't come off, a lot of it is primer as well. Um, a lot of the gray is primer where I've tested my sprayer with primer in it. Um, so I'm not really concerned about getting the paint off if it's already there and it's staying. Chances are it's gonna be fine. And I'll just repeat this process with all the doors and then rinse them off with clean water. It's been probably a little over an hour, but let's see what we've got, how our hardware is looking. That'll come pretty clean. Let's see what we've got on these. Oh, yeah. See, all that paint's just, just going to come right off now. Remember, all we did was a little bit of dish soap and just left them in that crock pot for about an hour. There's that one. My suggestion is if you're cleaning a lot of hardware like this, don't take them out of the pot all at once. 
because what happens is that they start drying and then your paint starts drying back on and it's a lot easier when it's wet and slightly warm but then that way you can get them cleaner faster we have gotten all of the hinges and all of the knobs cleaned this is what they look like when I just took the um, paint off of them which is nice and this is what they look like if I just took some barkeepers friend and cleaned them up so they could clean up even more than this this kind of looks like an oil rubbed bronze but yeah they're quite nice they've got a lot of weight to them um, so I'm not really sure that I'm going to put these back on because these are vintage pieces and it just seems a shame to waste them on cabinets that are in my shop, in my paint room that are just going to get messed up again. Whereas somebody who is doing either a vintage piece of furniture or perhaps even has a vintage kitchen maybe looking for this same knob so what i do with things like this is i put them on my etsy store and resell them when they're vintage pieces like this because there are so many people that are looking for one knob or two knobs are missing on that piece and you know they could really use it to redo a piece so i'm going to put those on the etsy store and then they can go to a new home and be used somewhere else. I am going to prep all of these the exact same way so that there's no, dis no difference in the way that I prep the ones for the sprayer that I use every day as opposed to the budget sprayer that we're trying out. I'm gonna get these sanded down and then we'll wait for those to set up and then we'll get them sanded down as well. What we're gonna do is we are going to take a look and see how this tools wall sprayer sprays. Um, I had been telling Alex that I would like to have a second sprayer just because sometimes if I'm doing two projects. I don't want to have to clean my gun out four times a day to spray different projects. And it'd be nice to have an extra one. And the email came and they asked if I wanted to try this out. And, you know, my stipulations to them were, I'll try it out, I'll do a video. If it's no good, I will say that on the video. If it's good, I'll say that on the video, but, um, I didn't want to do a project and be obligated to say, oh yeah, this is fantastic when I'm thinking, no, this is not fantastic. So what we're gonna do is we are going to see how it works together. I have unboxed it. The one thing I like here is that it has a adjustable nozzle. So if your cup is on and you're spraying up, you can set that nozzle to where it will pick up the paint out of the bottom. If you're spraying down, you turn that nozzle the other way and it'll pick up all the paint out of the bottom. That's quite cool. I like that. It has a compression fitting for your hose. So you just pop it in there. This works as your compressor, just like with my Semi Pro 2. Um, my Semi Pro 2 has a turbine unit, and that this basically is the same thing or same thing as a compressor if you were, you know, using one that needed a compressor. Um, it is 800 watt, it reads that it's 800 watt, it's got about the same noise level as a shop vac. So it's not terribly noisy. It came with a top that basically if you were in the middle of a project and say you needed three coats, 
you could take that cup off, put this top on, and save your paint, clean your gun up, and go back to it later. So that's kind of cool, like that. It comes with three nozzles, and I did change the nozzle out that came with it. I think it had this one on it, which would let through like a thicker paint and this one is an even thicker paint and I went with the smallest um, just because I wanted to itemize the paint real well. It also comes with this to be able to clean the gun as well. It comes with a viscosity cup. It also has a little book and the little book has a chart in it for how many seconds it should take for whatever product that you are running through the gun. So that's all you need to know. You'll just fill your viscosity cup up, set your, your timer, and however long it takes to run that through, you'll know whether you need to thin that product down more or not. All right, it comes with a strap where you can put this on your hip you can set it on the floor as well, but if you were doing a lot of moving, I think this could be quite handy. Um, it does have about a 10 foot length of hose to it. So I'll just pop that into there. I always would suggest that you clean any unit that you, you purchase before you use it because from factories they can have leftover tiny pieces of plastic or um, sometimes oils or what have you. So always clean them first thoroughly and then use them. Another cool feature here, if you really make a mess of this sprayer when you're spraying, it's got a lock button here, but the whole head comes out to clean it. I think that's pretty cool. This will control if you are up and down this direction, then your, your spray is gonna be horizontal. And if you turn it this direction, your spray is gonna be vertical. So, and on this one, something quite cool is if it is at a 45 degree angle, it'll spray a circle, just a circular pattern. These are our contestants for the Tillswell sprayer that we're trying out. We have six doors on this side and the other five are on the other side of the room. Um, and they are being held for my Fuji sprayer. And we're going to see which sprayer actually sprays better or if you can tell a difference at all. We're gonna wipe them down, get the dust off of them and then let them dry for a little bit and then we'll start spraying. As with anything, we're straining our paint. You always want to strain your paint because if you don't, you will end up with trash in your nozzle. It can be annoying and cost you time and product. All right, so just pop it in there. Screw it down. We're itemizing paint, so we definitely want to put a mask on. I'm using a Trend Stealth mask. As you can see, it has N100 filters in it, so it will filter out very, very small particles. They are, you can change those out. This also has a rubber seal around the face, so if you're wearing glasses or safety glasses, it's, it does not fog them up, and this is very comfortable. I can wear this for eight hours with no trouble. Something else that they thought up with the design of this, which is handy, is that that will fit right in to the, the motor part, the compressor part. It's got a little hole there. So if you needed both hands to fixed tape or what have you, which we've all had problems with. That's quite handy. The motor being on the floor or on your hip makes this quite light as well. 
Um, I think in total it weighs about five pounds. For something with very little prep, I would say I am absolutely impressed. It's hard to tell with white, but when we get to the front sides of these, you'll really be able to tell because the front sides of these are so super smooth that any imperfection than a paint is going to show up so we'll get to really test it out so stay tuned to get my full assessment of whether this sprayer is worth the money or do you have to go all in and buy an expensive sprayer to get that finish you want Okay, so this is the paint job, the first coat on the Tillswall painter, and we have gone over it with a very fine sandpaper and sanded over. I am amazed, truly amazed. I did not expect the results I'm getting from this sprayer, to be honest. The flaw that we have here is because I dripped water because I cleaned the nozzle. So that's down to me, not the sprayer. It'll cover on the second coat, it'll be fine. But there's no runs, no sputter. Feels fantastic. So we're gonna get the second coat on here and I think that'll be all we need. All right, let's take a look at the cleanup side of this. This will come off. So all you gotta do is clear that. Then we're gonna take off the ring. Everything here, there's no electrics on the gun. So it doesn't matter if it gets wet. All right, and then we're just gonna detach your needle hole from your thing that provides air. And we're just gonna clean those out. Now, Tills will provide a little brush and then a little thing for cleaning out the small hole where your needle comes through so that if there are any little um, paint boogies in there it'll get those out so we'll just use that now i ordered to go with my fuji sprayer a cleaning kit and it came with all these little brushes that I can actually use on this as well and I will leave a link in the description for that as well because it is so handy to have those if you've got a sprayer all we have to do here is push this down and you can actually pull that right out and then we can get in here and be sure that we've got our needle nice and clean. Now, 
you want to be very careful with this because if you damage this the sprayer will not spray correctly now we're just going to run water through where the paint comes up and you can see it coming out the nozzle until it runs clear and along with my um, cleaning kit that I bought it comes with a big long brush that I can put in there. Just gonna run that in there. Make sure all the water that's going through is coming out nice and clear. Now you could also just put water in the gun and keep spraying it until it sprays clear, but this works just as well. And pop that back in and you're ready to go on your next time. All right, we have one other thing to clean on this sprayer now that the job is done. There is a filter in the back and you just pop that out and give it a clean under the sink, let it dry, next day pop it back in. Okay, today we're gonna finish up painting these cabinet doors and we are gonna use my Fuji Semi Pro 2 HVLP sprayer and see how it compares to that Tilth Wall sprayer that we were using yesterday. And this is a sprayer that I have used for quite some time now, well over a year. Can't remember exactly when I bought it, but so it's one that I'm very familiar with. Now these sprayers, we're not talking about apples to apples. Um, so price points, they're very, very different. This sprayer today runs $523 on Amazon, I believe. Now, there are plenty of HVLP sprayers and I've done a video on sprayers before. And if you wanna see that, we'll put the link in the description. The one thing that I did notice with that Tillswall sprayer is that, you know, it, the, the cup on it, it's a little bit bulky, but you know, you've also got the hose on this. So both of them could be, um, a challenge in a really tight space, but I think that that would be the same case with most sprayers. This is your turbine unit. It has some weight to it. So, Unlike the tills wall, you can't put that on your hip and carry it around, but you do have a 25 foot hose. It comes with an attachment that you can either attach to your turbine unit, or you could put it on a shelf or what have you, but it's quite handy for holding your gun. I have left paint in my gun for, okay, I'm gonna be honest, about a week and come back and it is perfectly fine. Um, give it a stir, sprays beautifully. So that is the thing with the air pressure coming through the top and pushing down is that it doesn't allow air to escape. It's, you know, and you don't have the same problems that you would have with the tills wall. And if you left paint in that tills wall for a couple of hours, you're going to need to take your gun apart and clean it. But an hour, you'd probably be okay. Maybe two, but any more than that, I think you might run into some issues with having to clean that gun real well. Um, like I say, I do have a video on spray guns that gives you all the specs and everything of a few of them that I have used and why I actually chose to go with the Fuji Semi Pro 2. Um, but you can check that out if you like. We'll put the description, put it, we'll put the link in the description and you can really get the ins and outs. But this is just to see whether a $70 sprayer can actually do as good a job as my $523 sprayer, I believe that's what it is today on Amazon. So let's get this filled with paint, 
same thing. We are going to strain everything that we spray. Doesn't matter what kind of sprayer you use, you need to strain it. So let's get that done and get some paint on these doors. My assessment of the Tillswell HVLP floor base spray gun is that it is definitely worth the money. I think just under $70. We'll put a link for it in the description. Um, but I honestly cannot tell the difference in which one was painted with my Fuji and which one was painted with the Tillswell. And that's saying quite a lot because I did not expect a great deal from this spray gun, to be quite honest. I thought it might be adequate for a, um, you know, behind the scenes, you know, first coat kind of thing, but it exceeded my expectations and I'm just shocked. The downside of it is that for me, this cup is too big for, for what I do. But if you were doing a four piece bedroom suit all at once, or you were doing a room, which you could do with this quite easily. Whereas I don't feel like with my, my Fuji HVLP, I don't feel like I could actually paint a wall. It's more a project paint gun, more for furniture, trim, things like that. Um, I have done 700 feet of trim with my Fuji, so it will do trim and it does it very well. It does have a lot more overspray than my Fuji, quite a bit more. That's something to keep in mind if you, you know, are in a space where you cannot have a lot of overspray. Um, say in your driveway next to your neighbor's car, that's probably not gonna make friends. It has a lot of overspray, but it sprays well. Um, for a beginner spray gun, I think this is definitely worth the money and it would definitely get you comfortable enough with spraying that you could then determine what you need. The ones that are painted with the Tillswell HVLP floor base spray gun are, they have a blue tape on their hinge. And the ones that are painted with my Fuji do not. As I say, I cannot see any difference whatsoever. Hello. Hey. How you handling your cabinets? You tell me which one of these are painted with Fuji and which one of these are painted with the Tillswell. You're on the spot. Okay, I've, I've worked out a code because you've got blue tape on some. Okay. So that means I can probably compare. Now, what difference does the inside of that make? I'm, I'm trying. Fuji's blue tape. Am I right? You tell me. Are you right? Yeah. Are you done guessing? Yeah, I'm right. Fuji's blue tape. Wrong. Yeah. Absolutely wrong. That's a good sprayer. <laughs> That's a good sprayer. It's hard to tell, but you cannot feel a difference. And that's, that's pretty good for $70 sprayer versus $523 sprayer. Definitely, I'd say thumbs up. I'll be putting this in my toolbox to use. So 
yeah, um, definitely worth the money. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to try and answer them in the comments. And hope you enjoy the video.